if you can, Brother Don, come on up and preach for us tonight. Amen. Brother Don Drake, our missionary to the U.S. military. Amen. I really appreciate your Thank service, you, Brother, Brother Don. God bless you. you. Brother. Amen. Well, it's a real joy for us to be back this evening, and we thank God again for Grace Baptist Church standing with us, helping us to do what we do for the Lord. We could not do what we do without churches like this that stand with us, prays for us, and gives faithfully to our work so we can go and do what we need to do for the Lord without any worry. Sure. Amen. 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 Don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from. We don't have to worry about where our next tank of gas is coming from. Amen. 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 Whatever the case, God takes care yes. of it all. Yeah. And it's through churches like you. And we're so grateful for your faithfulness to the Lord, taking care of the missionaries. And we appreciate it so much tonight. Now we're going to turn to Luke chapter number 10 tonight for the message in just a little bit. Uh, Luke chapter number 10 in the Word of God. and uh, But uh, as I said this morning, and as you well know, we've been, on, uh, been in missions now a little over 10 years. We spent three and a half years in uh, Maligan, Germany, about six kilometers north of Kaiser Slaughter. We pastored the uh, Heritage Baptist Church there, serving our U.S. Air Force and our U.S. Army. And we thank God for the fruit that the Lord gave us there. We had some uh, 38 uh, uh, people saved, and we thank God for that. Amen. No, it was 31 saved and 38 baptized. Let me get that right. Amen. 31 saved, and we baptized 38. We had some that came into the church that had been saved earlier but had not yet followed the Lord in believer's baptism. And through the course of time, God uh, convicted them and draw them in. Therefore, we were able to baptize them as well. And we just thank God for the fruit that we had there. You know, military ministry is a fruitful ministry, and we thank God for letting us go and serve our troops uh, in the foreign land. And we just thank God for the days that we spent there. And of course, I know you've had our prayer letters through the years uh, and how God used us there. And of course, after leaving Germany, uh, we came home for furlough. And then of course, we came home and stayed longer than we expected. We came in for a year or nine months re in reality, but yet we were not able to continue because we couldn't get our visa, as we said this morning. But when we left Germany, my wife had just finished up her 10 months of aggressive treatment after her breast cancer and therefore she was at a very low ebb and uh, her immune system was very low. And the doctor announced in October, early the first week of October that she was now in remission. Mm -hmm. And so we yeah. thank God for that. Yeah, yes. But uh, so we left there for furlough and came home and you know, for her to rest and, and uh, re uh, you know, recover somewhat. And, and so uh, when we came home, we came home praying with the Lord, what is our next station of duty? Where would you have us to go and what would you have us to do? Well, the Lord laid on our heart in January to go to Spain, southern Spain, Maroon Air Base. There's, they don't have one English-speaking church whatsoever off base of any kind, good or bad. Not one English-speaking church. And so uh, that touched our heart and we found out about that began to pray and the Lord laid on our heart to go and see if we could help our troops there and try to start a church. And so we went with that idea, with that intent uh, to start a new work. And so we went and we started visiting, we started knocking on doors, we started putting out literature and we tried to find the military wherever they were because uh, back on 9-11, not 9-11, but back in 2015, uh, the order came down that the military could not wear the uniform off base other than from the house and to the base and back to the house. And therefore they couldn't get, you know, do anything in uniform because of profiling. They didn't want nothing like that. So anyway, we understand. So it's hard for us to locate because we couldn't get on base. 
We were not allowed to get on base. And therefore, it was hard for us to find military uh, because before they came down with that uniform situation, all we had to do was go to a lo local restaurant there in Germany, and man, there they sit at noon for, with their lunch and had the uniform on. Man, I went up to their tables with tracks and introduced myself and tried to invite them out to be with us, but we couldn't do that in Spain. We, we didn't know where they were, amen. So we had to look and hunt and find. But anyway, God was good. And uh, uh, the Lord allowed us to witness and put out a lot of tracks there and do a work for God. But out of our 36 months in Spain, the Lord allowed us to fill in down at Road of Spain. Our director, Brother Brian Baggett, called us uh, in early 2019 and said, Brother Drake, would it be possible for you to go down to Rhoda and fill in at Bethel Baptist Church? So we're waiting for uh, Brother Staley, uh, uh, the pastor, to arrive on the field. He's not able right now. He's got, still got some deputation work to do and, of course, his visa situation. And so I said, yeah, I can go down. And so we went down in the spring of 2019 and straight a couple of months. We commuted back and forth about 70 miles from uh, Euphrata, where we were, about 20 minutes south of Sevilla, down to uh, Rhoda uh, there on the coast. And so we were there with them for two months at that particular time. And Brother John Hornbeck came down from Italy and filled in from June of 2019 until the end of uh, December. Gave six months there uh, filling in. And of course, around November, uh, Brother Baggett called me again. He said, Brother Drake, could you go back to Rhoda? He said, Brother Steele is not able to come yet. I said, yes, sir, we can go back down and, and, and help them. And so we did. We went back uh, the first, uh, I think it was January 2nd, I believe. It was the first Thursday night of, of 2021. Uh, I mean, 2020, excuse me. The first Thursday night of 2020, we went down. And, of course, we went with the idea of being there a few weeks, hoping the Brother Stadium would come. But yet we was there for the whole year, 12 solid months. We was there traveling back and forth, commuting. And so we thank God for that opportunity, for that door being open to us. We was able to go down and minister to our Navy personnel and to our CBs uh, that are stationed there at Rhoda. And I thank God for that place and what a blessing it was to go and visit there. I had went there when I was pastoring here in the States. I had the opportunity to go five different times to Rhoda to Bethel Baptist Church and preach revival meetings for Brother Chris Parker, who was there for some 20 years as missionary pastor there in Rhoda. So that church is near and dear to our heart, and we just uh, give God praise, honor, and glory for letting us go and be a part. And of course, my wife says now, she says, well, you know why we went to Spain now, don't you? I said, she, I said why? I said, we went to start a church. She said, no, we went to fit in at Rhoda, amen. We went in to hold the fort for them. And, uh, but anyway, we just thank the Lord. I mean, we had, we had some great days there. We love Spain. We thank God for the opportunity to go. And, and of course, we did open the doors to the church, Victory Baptist Church. We had a high day of seven. And of course, I preached on uh, uh, Facebook every Sunday morning from February uh, down through December of 2021 before we left. And so I just thank God for those days. And of course, October of, uh, Last year, Brother Baggett, our director, visited with us there in Spain. And uh, while he was there, we discussed arm ministry. He said, Brother Drake, I think you would be ideal to work in our arm ministry at BIMI. The arm ministry stands for, it's A-R-M, it's Assist Relief Missionary. And beloved, uh, we talked it over, and, and of course, he said, now, brother, he said, <laughs> Uh, everything's approved already. We've already talked to the board for about you already and said, when you get home, and that was October, we were planning on leave for, leaving for furlough in December. And he said, well, when you get home, he said, sometimes next spring, early summer, if, uh, you know, whenever you want to, just write me a letter to the effect of making a transition over to arm ministry. And so that's what we did. And uh, we went to... Uh, BIMI back in August, August the 16th of this uh, this year, and met with the personnel board uh, there, and they approved us for our ministry, and we're making that full-time transition from military, even though we'll remain in military ministry, and Brother Baggett will remain our military director, but we're transitioning full-time from military ministries 
to full-time armed ministries. And beloved, that means that we will be going anywhere in the world uh, up to three months at a time in, uh, at filling in at some place for a missionary who needs to come in for a short furlough, maybe for a medical reasons, family situations, whatever it might be. We've got missionaries on the field tonight that need to come in for a short period, but cannot because they don't have someone to take their place, someone to stand in their place and hold the fort while they're gone. You cannot leave a mission work, or as far as that goes, any work without someone there to stand up and take leadership. And so that's what we'll be doing, and we covet your prayers that God would use us in this new work for his honor and glory. And of course, we've been at this a long time as far as ministry. And of course, it won't be anything new to us, but yet we know it's a great need. And my wife and I both are, are excited. We're, we're satisfied that God was gonna allow us to do this uh, in, uh, in our days coming. And so you pray for us that God would use us mightily in the armed ministry. I was preaching up in Roanoke, Virginia back early on this year and uh, Brother Paul Morrow is the pastor there. And I was telling him what we was doing. He said, Brother Drake, I just got a call from one of our missionaries this past week. And they need to come home, but they can't. They don't have someone like you to come and stand in their place. He said, Brother, it's, hey, he said, I'm, I'm excited about your new work. I tell you, we're going to continue with you and stay with you. And I said, I appreciate that. He said, because myself, being a former missionary, I know the need uh, that it is for someone to come and fill in and help you on the mission field. So we, that's our new work in the future. And we thank God for it. And all the churches thus far that we have shared our new ministry and, new heart, and our heart with, uh, they've all been positive. We have not had one negative word uh, concerning this new uh, this switch in ministry. And, uh, and of course, as I said, we'll remain in military missions. We'll go and relieve our military missionaries, but also we'll go and relieve missionaries in, in English-speaking works anywhere in the world up to three months because we don't have to get a visa to go in. So we can go and stand in and then come out without any problem. So we're looking forward to this, and you just pray that God would have his will in our hearts and lives. Amen? Amen? But God is good, and I thank God again for our military work and for the ministry of uh, military mi uh, missions, and we thank God for letting us serve for these 10 years in that particular ministry, and we'll continue to go and recruit and invite folks. I'm always putting the word out, hey, we need military missionaries. We have some 80 missionaries, uh, military missionaries at BIMI where we serve. And, and, and of course, we count husband and wife, amen. And of course, that means we've got about 40 couples, probably more like 45, 46 couples now. But we need help because over 50% of us are gray-headed, amen. And we need some new blood. We need some young people to come in. And we are having some, and we thank God for that. But you just pray the Lord's will be done. We went into military missions at the age of 62. Amen? And we thank God for letting us go. Amen. And we're excited about this new work in our ministry. Pray for us if you would, and just keep praying for us. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for you and what you do here at Grace Baptist Church. All right, we're going to take our Bibles and look tonight in Luke chapter number 10. Now, this is a very, very familiar portions of Scripture before us tonight. We're going to look at uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. You're very familiar with that, uh, beginning there in verse number 30 down through verse 37. But I want to back up. And look at this question uh, that this lawyer asked the Lord because that's why, uh, because of this question, the Lord has given us the parable of uh, the Good Samaritan. So we'll look back in verse number 25 tonight and uh, we'll 
begin reading there. The Bible says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Amen. Verse number 29, But he, the lawyer, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at that place, or at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Now we'll leave off reading there tonight. I'd like to bring this message on missions at work. Now, we being missionaries, it only be appropriate that we bring a message on missions. Amen. And beloved, here our Lord shows us and gives us an example. And we see through this Samaritan here, this story given to us by our Lord, we see missions at work. Now, missions is reaching our world one soul at a time. And this lawyer asked a great question, not a thing wrong with this question that he asked. He said, who is my neighbor? And the Lord gives the story of the good Samaritan. And of course he asked him, he said, now these three, the priest, amen, the Levite and the Samaritan, these three, which one do you think uh, he's a good neighbor. He said, well, the one, no doubt, that showed mercy on him. And the Lord said, that's right. Go and do thou likewise. Now, beloved, what is our responsibility this evening to those who live in our neighborhood, those who live in our town, those who live in our county, those who live in our nation, state, those who live in our nation, and those who live in the world. What is our responsibility to these? Now, the Good Samaritan tonight is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ because we see here uh, in the Word of God, uh, in verse 33, the Bible says he had compassion on him. Oh, listen, there's no one that is more compassionate than our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And beloved, he said down there, he said, you take good care of him now. And he said, whatsoever thou spendest, he said, uh, when I come again, I will repay thee. Well, we know he's coming again, amen. amen. You know why we know that tonight? It's because he said he would. Sure. 
And beloved, it's just as sure tonight, the coming of the Lord. Amen. It's so uh, uh, wonderful and we're so excited about that. As we said tonight, as we sung that song, what a day, what a glorious day yeah. that will Amen. be. Amen. Amen. And beloved, we know he's coming. And of course, as we look at this story tonight before us, we see the example that our Lord Jesus has set for us. Now, I want to take verse number 37 tonight and, and, and look at this one verse and, and, and show here tonight missions at work. I want you to notice, first of all, the Bible says he went to him. This Samaritan went to him. Now, let me say tonight, if we're going to reach anybody, anywhere, uh, we must first take the gospel to them, wherever they are, locally or globally. Our purpose, our calling is to go. We cannot sit back on our do-nothing and expect people to come to Christ, expect people to come into our churches. Beloved, we see here that he went to him you know, I thank God for my brother-in-law who came to me at my home in April of 1972, stood on the steps of my house and looked me square into my eyes and gave me a gospel witness. And he said this, he said, Don, what is five minutes of lust compared to eternity? Now, he couldn't have said anything else that would have stuck me any deeper than what he said. And, beloved, that afternoon after he left, it was on Sunday afternoon, I went back in the house. I told my wife, I said, we're going to church tonight. She said, what? See, that's something we didn't do. and something we hadn't done. We'd only been to church one time, and that was the night we got married. Together, that's the first and last time we've been to, get to church together. And now I said, we're going to church tonight. Get ready. Sure enough, we did. That night, the man of God preached to me. To me. He had the mission. He had his gun loaded for me and shot me down. Killed all my excuses for not being saved. Mm -hmm. Beloved, listen. He went to him. And beloved, he went to where he was. Thank God Jesus comes to where we are. Whatever situation, whatever the circumstances are, the Lord steps in, butts into our life. He comes to where we are. And so this Samaritan went to him. And beloved, we must go to them. See, that great command that we call the great commission, our Lord said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And beloved, unless we go, we'll never reach anyone near or far. People are needy tonight. They are everywhere. And beloved, we could throw a rock from the do front door of this church and hit somebody that needs the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we must go to them. And the Bible says he went to them. Amen. And then there's something else we see tonight. Notice, secondly, in verse 34, he bound up his wounds. Here was a man on the side of the road that had been beaten, nigh to death, left bleeding and dying. And this man came to him and bound up his wounds. And may I say tonight, people are beaten down by sin and degradation tonight. And the only thing powerful enough to bind up their wounds that's caused by sin is the word of God. Amen. Oh, my friend, listen tonight. God's word and Jesus has the power to mend broken hearts and lives. And we must give them the word or either send it to them by others. Psalm 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. And deliver them from all their destructions. 
Beloved, there's destructions there. The devil is trying his best to destroy the lives of people and bring them down into the grave without God. And we must, we must get to them with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a bomb in Gilead. Yes, a saving bomb, a soothing bomb. And a healing bomb. As I said this morning, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunged beneath that blood lose all. Lose all their guilty stains. Thank God tonight for the blood. And beloved, listen, the Bible says he went to him and he bound up his wounds. And then we see a third thing here in verse 34. <clears throat> He bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Now, oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. And wine heals by purifying. And the pouring of wine represents the salvation of the individual. And oil being mixed shows the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. We lead them to Christ. And he saves them and administers the word so the spirit can work in their lives. Our Lord, before he left there in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16, he told his disciples, I'm leaving, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And beloved, the comforter of God, the Holy Ghost of God lives in the heart of every born again child of God. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our guide. And beloved, we're sealed by him unto the day of redemption. Thank God he poured in oil and wine in unto our hearts. Thank God tonight. And beloved, we see another thing there. Uh, not only did he pour in a wine, I mean oil and wine, uh, but also he set him on his own beast. Set him on his own beast. Now, you know, it's not enough for us to lead someone to Christ, but we must physically help them. They are weak, they're vulnerable, and they need to grow and mature in the things of, of the Lord. And if you'll take your Bibles and turn back to Matthew chapter 28 for just a moment, Matthew chapter 28, we see the Great Commission, the Great Command given here, and also we see it in all four Gospels, and then we see it in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. But I want to draw your attention here to chapter 28 of the book of Matthew because here is something that I believe that we are missing today in our churches. Now, I admit, I admit, I've pastored now for some 40 years and uh, in, in here in the States and military work and so forth, uh, but yet this thing of discipleship, the Lord really got a hold of my heart a few years back and said, hey, son, you're missing it. You're winning people to Christ. You're, you're preaching the gospel and people are coming to Jesus, but yet we're not teaching them. We're not grounding them in the word of God and therefore they're not remaining. And so I think this is something that many churches need to pick up on. Notice there in verse 19, he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now he got evangelism there and baptism, but also here's discipleship, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now I know many, they depend on the pastor to spoon feed them the word of God. But beloved, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, the pastor's responsibility is to teach and train uh, disciples. And, and beloved, tonight we see here uh, that this happened here. He set him on his own beast. Beloved, we need to teach and we need to train new converts. Uh, we need to teach them how to study the word of God. We need to teach them how to pray. That's what the Lord did to his disciples. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, when thou prayest, amen. And he gives uh, his prayer there 
in Matthew chapter 6. But now his priestly prayer is there in chapter number 17 of the book of John. But beloved, listen, we need to teach him how to live for Christ. We need to teach him how to win souls. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this. He said to be a soul winner is the happiest thing in all the world. There's not a thrill anywhere that, uh, that amounts to that thrill when you reach out to an old sinner mm -hmm. as they pray and give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. Hey, a new creature is born into the family of God. Yeah. I tell you, it's precious and we thank God for it. But he set him on his own beast. He didn't leave him there by the roadside. He helped him. <clears throat> but notice something else. He put him on his own beast there and brought him to the inn. Brought him to a safe place. Brought him to the safe house. And may I say this evening that the local church is like a hospital caring for the wounded and the dying uh, that's been caused by sin. The church of the living God helps People grow spiritually and many have been helped and healed from life's beatings by the church, not only locally, but worldwide. And I thank God for the church because the church will care for you. The church will love on you. The church will encourage you. The church will strengthen you and the church will pray for you and the church will help you, thank God. Oh, I praise God for the church and in the church we can get help. In time of need. We, in the church, we receive hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the church, thank God, we receive healing yeah. from the causes of sin. Yes. And praise God, every now and then, we get a little heaven in church. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. We get in a happy service sometimes. Hallelujah. And we thank God for those times. But oh, listen, he brought him to the end. A safe house, a safe place. And that's where we need to bring them. We need to encourage them and bring them to church. Let them come to the house of God. Get them to the sound of the gospel. Be uh, uh, helped in the word of God. Train up in the things of God. Oh, listen, here's missions at work right here in this story tonight. And then there's a last thing I want to share with you here. Notice there in verse 34 again. He brought him to an end and took care of him. He took care of him, brought him to the innkeeper, introduced him, and said, take care of him. And here is some money. And do what you can for him. And, and, and when I come back, when I come again, if I need to give more, pay more, I'll take care of that. You just take good care of him. He needs help. And beloved, we see here that he didn't abandon him. Found him on the side of the road, half dead, beaten down, and put him on his own beast, brought him to the inn, and told the innkeeper, said, take care of him. Oh, he secured the kindness of the innkeeper. Now, let me say this tonight, and we'll close. This is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ leaving his work of missions in the hand of believers. He told him, he said, look, he said, you take care of him. And when I come again, if there's any more, I'll pay, I'll take care of him. And then I want you to see, here's the challenge tonight of this message, the challenge. Here's the application. I believe the Lord would have us to get a hope up tonight. In verse 37, and he said, well, let's go back to verse 36. Which now of these three? Well, we have a priest, which represents religion. Now, religion doesn't make you nothing but more, uh, but make you nothing more than a two-fold uh, two child of the devil. Religion can't save you. Religion can't help you. And then we see the Levite who represents the law. The law can't save. The law cannot help you. Now, we know the law is our schoolmaster that points us to Christ, but yet the law cannot save. And then we find the Samaritan here, who's a type of the Lord Jesus. 
who had compassion on him and helped him, took care of him, brought him to the inn and said, take care of him when I come again. Thank God he's coming again, amen? Even so come, Lord Jesus. But notice there, he said, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do likewise. There's our challenge. There's our application. The Lord is saying to us, as he said to this lawyer, go thou and do likewise. We all know somebody somewhere. Family member, friend, co-worker, maybe even an enemy. But we know somebody that needs the Lord. Somebody needs somebody to go and show mercy and invite them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow together. Pastor, you come tonight and give the invitation that the Lord leads you. Our Father in heaven, we bow now before you to thank you for the good day you've given us in the house of God with these dear people. We pray your blessings upon each and every one. Supply, bless, have your will and way tonight in our hearts and lives. We thank you for the Lord Jesus who gave himself for us. The Bible says he loved us and gave himself for us. And Lord, we're so grateful tonight for eternal life in him. Now, Father, help us to go forth from this night and show mercy and do likewise as the Bible says here tonight. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand together and our heads bowed and our eyes closed for prayer. We're going to have a song here in just a, in just a moment. And uh, But as we do, what a wonderful message and what a great challenge. And really, that is what missions is about go and do thou likewise in another place jesus said as the father hath sent me even so send i you mm -hmm. and that is for uh, all of us tonight and then this aspect as well and uh and you've probably heard it before also uh as we're giving the great commission uh that it applies to uh not only just to to go but it's as you're going we're living in a, in a time when everybody is on the go. Everybody is busy. All of us throughout the week, we've gone somewhere. Uh, we're going to a workplace. We're going to perhaps to a school. We're going to Walmart. Uh, probably all of us in, in, in the building tonight uh, will be going to Walmart at least a couple of times in the next uh, few weeks. I'm, I mean, my goodness, some folks are going at least one or two days every week, but we're going somewhere. We're all, go, we're all out there all going somewhere. Yeah. And so as we're going also, yeah. we're to watch for that one that's yeah. in that ditch. Yeah. We're to look for that one that's along the side of the road yeah. and, uh, and, and, needs, and needs the Lord. And so with God's help, we'll go and do uh, likewise. Amen. Well, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for the message tonight. Lord, we thank you for the time that you've given us together. Lord, we thank you for the challenge. We thank you for the encouragement. Uh, Lord, there are people all around us that are lying in ditches, yeah. all around us in, in, the, in this life. Uh, they're, they're separated from God. Uh, they need that uh, help. Mm. They need that oil. They need that wine. They need that binding of their wounds. Yeah. Lord, they need that binding of their hearts yes. because their hearts need to be brought to you. Oh, Lord, help us as, we've, as we're challenged tonight to as we go and to actually go and to do likewise mm -hmm. and bring others to you, Lord, for you alone are the one that can heal the broken heart mm -hmm. and you're the only one that can save the lost soul. Yeah. And Lord, it's our responsibility yes. to point them to you as John the Baptist would say of old, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. Lord, it's our responsibility in this generation, this hour, oh, to point others to yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we pray mm -hmm. that you'd help us to do that. 
Lord, we give you the glory and we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, we do humbly pray. Amen. 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 Let's sing the song together. The altar's open. Brother Tim, if you come and lead us while we sing. Page 325. When 